G'day and welcome back to Wine News, another exciting episode uh, for, planned for this evening. With me today is our esteemed wine expert, Danny, and our esteemed uh, EP, Wayne, on the set. Good uh, evening. How, how are hey, you, boys? Sir. I'm very good. Yeah, well. Welcome back. Does does expert, is that expert in consumption or, because I think that's probably on, my, on this my ed, main... On this particular uh, wine uh, sort of subject, I think consumption is primary knowledge <laughs> rather than secondary. Well on, on that on that note I'll happy to on that exactly. definition I'll I'll happy to take the title. Exactly. And, and is this the, the, the bearded uh, the bearded burblers? Burblers because uh, I see Daddy you you've got a bit of growth uh, going as well. This is about as good as I get. That's uh, my member. Th this will be yeah this will be gone tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah no it's uh it's been growing from November and that's, that's I, well I started growing this in November last year. Right. So it's coming along very nicely. <laughs> so. Indeed. Um, I was going to say, how, what have we been up to, boys? What are you about to win? Start playing cricket again. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. the traveling. Uh, going real well. I've just had the cortisone injection in the shoulder oh. and in the foot, so cricket's oh, going one. really well. Yeah. Completely numb on the right hand yeah. side. I tell you what, though, when you do finish cricket, boys normally grab a beer. I'm straight for a bowl of white. Straight for the bowl of white? Straight nice. for the bowl of white. Chill, nice. The chilled yeah. in the fridge, ready to go. Yeah. Glass yeah. of water first, of course. Oh, we'll yes. Keep hydrated and then straight to the wine. We'll have to talk to the bar manager at the cricket club and see if we can have that. <laughs> yeah, that sort of, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if, 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 like our Australian politicians, if uh, there's any dual citizenship claim going on there, you might get a call up for I, the second test. Exactly, I we're think so. In yeah. the, we're running out of Australians. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty no, good no, at No, no, for the for the, for the arch enemy. <laughs> they're, I'm pretty good at headbutting too, yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll fit right in. You'll fit right in. <laughs> Uh, now, we're going to talk about a Pinot Grigio today, which is something we haven't done on the show before. Uh, up until about 10 minutes ago, I didn't actually know how a Pinot Grigio was actually made. But uh, what, what, how, what goes into it? What sort of... Oh, oh, to, uh, oh okay. Well, no, no, I'm <laughs> I was turning to the expert. <laughs> well, yeah, Pinot, Pinot, Gris, Pinot Grigio um, are fast becoming the uh, highest volume uh, white consumption in Australia. Is that right? Um, and and appear to be taking over from uh, Sauvignon Blanc mm. as the number one consumed white in Australia. Yeah. And and I think there's probably a fair reason for that in that uh, the styles that we've seen emerge in Australia, predominantly from cooler climate mm. regions, mm. Um, uh, are very light, very soft, very yep. easy drinking. Yep. They've got a little bit of flavour, but they're very approachable. Mm. Um, Not overly sweet. No, but that's still, right. But still with a zest of some, fruit. Some yeah. Pinot can, Gris can be a bit sweet. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. some can verge on that yeah. fruit sweetness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, you know, I think at their best, they've got uh, sort of a lightness, a freshness, yep. uh, an easy drink and uh, an approachability and, to them. And what I found really interesting was I always thought it was a blend of grapes, like mm -hmm. red and white, but it's actually a white grape with a red skin. Yeah, that's right. It's. Um, uh, it's, it's a very, very pale skin, and if you think uh, of its, uh, if it's close relative Pinot Noir, mm. uh, the red grape, uh, Pinot Noir has actually got a very, very light, thin skin itself. Yeah. Mm. And for that reason, when it's made as a red wine, yep. if you're looking for any degree of, uh, of tannin structure, you've got to um, uh, initiate a lot of skin contact mm. to get that colour out. And it's yep. the reason that Pinot Noir yeah, is okay. often very pale when yeah. you compare it to a, say, a Shiraz mm. or a Cabernet. Mm. But Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio, they're gen generally quite gently pressed. Yep. So when the juice runs out, you don't pick up uh, any colour or, or much colour mm. from the skin. Yeah. And when you think about it, so what, what's, uh, um, when you think about Champagne, yes. so Champagne is made from Chardonnay, Pinot Noir mm. and Pinot Meunier. Is that right? Yeah. So and again, champagne is is light in colour mm. for that same reason that the skin contact is is almost minimal. You're just slightly yep. pressing the, the the grape to let the juice run out, so you don't get any so of that you, skin yes. pickup. Yeah. And I don't know if you see it on camera, but it's actually got almost a, a rose gold look to the wine. Mm. Um, so this has they, they leave a, a few skins in it or yeah, something. Yeah. Like that. yeah. yeah. Should we have a taste? Because I mean, Wayne, yeah, well, like, I'm almost finished. You might, Wayne might need a top up. <laughs> this is my favourite at the moment. This is my, you know, what do you love? You know, like if you're going yep. to a store, I'm always going for this because um, it is just refreshing, especially it's coming it's in Australia now. It's mm, coming lovely in lovely light. So, so Pinot, Pinot Green Grigio generally, that's been your go to? Pinot Grigio and mm -hmm. this one, the Brocken Shape. Um, and, and, and it would be a, a 
probably be on your Christmas table for sure. Yeah. You know. oh, I like any Pinot Grigio that's got a bit of spritz, mm -hmm. like a little bit of spritz about it. So, um, little, what, in terms of a little bit of acidity to the... Or, yeah, or just a little, like a little, fizz. Yeah, little fizz. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, so this one, this one's got quite a bit of flavour. Uh, so from, mm. from Eden Valley, so, you know, generally, uh, so if you're thinking Victoria, yep. um, places like Mornington, Yarra Valley, mm. in fact. Cooler climates. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, they do some lovely ones down on the peninsula. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Queerly, uh, probably doing some of the best, um, best examples in, yep. in Victoria and, and Kathleen Queerly was a champion of the variety some 20 years ago when right. no one else had heard of it. Yep. But uh, it's a very recent wine to the Australian market, isn't it? But uh, it's only been the last 20 years that we really had well, it's, Australian it's literally, made varieties. Yeah, it's literally been in, in probably the last five to 10 years that it's mm. really it's really Ramped accelerated. Yeah. And I think that's that's because of its, its drinkability, its approachability. Mm. I mean, this is probably a good example of, to me, this is probably on the, um, probably the uh, richer, more fruit-driven end of the mm. spectrum. Yep. Uh, you can get them all dialed back a little bit. So yeah, you can get some. More, yeah, yeah. This has got quite a lot of flavour. Mm. Um, I, I, always, I always call it the white wine for red wine lovers. <laughs> so it's I'm a, I'm, I, I like red wine. I'm not a big, I, don't like, I don't like Chardonnay or Sad Blanc as such, but the Pinot Gris... Sad Blanc I can take, but yeah. Chardonnay, yeah, it's just, we need to get you there. <laughs> yeah. Chardonnay's well, sublime. Good Chardonnay right, sublime. Well, we'll yeah. do a Chardonnay episode in a when few you're, you, you're still stuck in the 90s, aren't <laughs> yeah, you, with big pineapple well, butter I've just moved up from the, from the cask. <laughs> Get you on a fifty dollars Chardonnay, yeah. you'll go. Ooh, wow. Oh, wow! Yeah. No worries. Exactly. I'll be hosting this yeah, show yeah, for a few yeah. weeks longer. That's we, for sure. we might we might do a road trip to Margaret River. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. that'll be a chat for the wine. Uh, Seventeen dollars for this. That's not bad. I think it's good value. Yeah, it's yeah. good value for that. Yeah. Look for it in your um in your all good bottle shops, but it's uh, and the name again is is Brock and Chack On Point Pinot Grigio from the from Eden Valley. What mm. would you drink with the? What would you eat with the boys? I would be magnificent on Christmas Day with a seafood sort of cocktail sort of stuff. Yeah, richer mm. crustaceans. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm. it's got they go lovely. It's with got seafood. that richer flavour. I think. Yeah, uh, I think or a nice, you know, salad uh, like a. a yeah, mango. but I would something on the savoury end too. Yeah. Even, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I would eat with it. In fact, this is sort of to me that this is your, your share around bottle Sunday afternoon. Before, yeah, Sunday before, before you have something to eat. The meat and Greek wine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, open yeah. the batting. Open yeah. the batting one. Yeah, yeah, open the batting. Yeah, take, exactly. take the shine off the new ball. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I like it. Perfect. Perfect. All right, and um, uh, on that note, we will uh, finish off this bottle and come back to you with another exciting episode of Wine News next week. Extraordinary wine for ordinary people. See ya. Cheers. Cheers.